Hey, this is Karen Ashley. I played Aisha the Yellow Ranger on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and you are listening to gogoodmen.com.au. Now, your full name is Karen Ashley Jackson, but you went by Ashley Jackson back in the 90s, and now you go by Karen Ashley. What was your yeah. thought process in making a stage name and then changing your stage name? I didn't really think of it as, like, a stage name. I always wanted to, um, I don't know, I think when I was, I, I, you know, everybody always called me Ashley, my family, everyone, they all call me Ashley. And when I decided to get into acting, I kind of wanted to just be an actress, and I kind of wanted to grow up, and I kind of wanted to just do something different. And I honestly was trying to think of a stage name, but I couldn't think of anything that I liked. So um, someone told me, well, what's wrong with your first name? No one's ever called you Karen. You should, you know, be Karen Ashley. And I just thought that was really cool. And next thing I know, I booked a television show, and that's what it was. <laughs> so it was like one of those things where I, I, I had high hopes to come up with something really interesting and really cool, and, you know, there'd be like this story. But, you know, I ended up just sticking with my first and middle name. I think the way your name is spelt K A R A N is is actually pretty cool. I've seen obviously K A R E N and K A R Y N. I've never seen A N. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it was real funny. My mom just kind of, she said she just kind of did it. You know, she didn't. You know, she's um, a Mexican American, so she was like not that familiar. You know, uh, her her native tongue is Mex- you know Spanish, so she wasn't that familiar on how to spell Karen. So she liked it spelled A-N, so it kind of just ended up being that way. Do you remember what some of the other options were for stage names that you came up with but didn't like? You know what? I don't even know. I can't even remember, but I'm sure they were really dumb and really, like, too cool for school. (laughs) And it probably was a huge blessing. I didn't go with any of those (laughs) names. (laughs) And I I read that you you started in music... um, so, obviously, your music career came first in a girl band called Crush. What do you yeah. remember of being being in a music, in a girl band back in the 90s, I guess, at the peak of the girl bands, or just before the peak of the girl bands, you know, when the Spice Girls came yeah. out? I know. It was, it was amazing because, really, I was more of a shy kid, you know. I, I always, from the day that I was born, I knew I wanted to be on stage. I didn't care if I was singing, dancing, acting. I didn't care what I was doing. I just wanted to be on stage some sort of way on TV. And I, um, being in the group really helped me come out of my shell. And it was really weird because it happened really fast. We we kind of uh, met each other. I had, there was like a, a, a TV show. It was kind of like a dance show, like a Soul Train kind of show or whatever that the local radio station was hosting in my home, well, my, where I was raised in Dallas, Texas. And I auditioned for the show. I had to lie about my age and I got on the show and I ended up meeting, um, my manager and one of the girls in the group at the time. And he kind of saw us together and was like, have you girls ever thought about being in a singing group? Jumped to a year later of nonstop rehearsals and just, like, preparing to, like, perform. We ended up getting a record deal with a and Records. And we got to work with people like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. And we were, like, their, their you know, special group. And so, you know, they produced Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey. I mean, they worked with everyone in the business. So, for us, it was like a dream come true to be with such heavyweights. Um, we ended up being signed for a long time, and, and, and we ended up doing the Mo Money soundtrack, and we got to go on a promotional tour. So it was like I got a taste of that, you know, uh, of that industry and of traveling, and, and I just loved it. And, and the funny thing was I had my first audition when I was in Crush. I auditioned for Sister Act 2, and that audition is what gave me kind of what, like, gave me the acting bug. Like, I got bit by the acting bug, and I knew – I wanted to be an actress. At some point in my career, I wanted to be an actress. And so when the group finally broke up, that was my first thing that I decided to do. I'm going to be an actress. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, give up on the music industry for a while. Maybe one day I'll come back to that. But I really want to try this acting thing. And maybe two months later, I I booked Power Rangers. You mentioned that you went on the talent show and got into music to try and come out of your shell. But then when you got into Crush, it sounds like you were pretty much thrown in the deep end. Was was being Mm -hmm. forced to come out of your shell, in hindsight, do you think that was the best decision? Or do you think you should have taken it a bit slowly? 
No, I, I think it was the best decision because that me now, the person that I am now, I'm a very extroverted person. I'm a very talkative person. So I think that shy person was just someone who I just didn't know how to, I didn't know how to get in the industry. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know, but I knew what my heart wanted to do, which was it was wanting to sing. It was wanting to dance. It was wanting to act. It was wanting to be on stage in front of a camera. I mean, I didn't really care if I was interviewing someone or if I was, you know, crying. I just wanted to perform. I wanted to, like, it was like that kid that always played make-believe and now finally got a chance to, you know, incorporate that as their, as, as like, a, their life. And it wasn't, no, it was no longer a hobby. It was actually an occupation. And I, I wouldn't have, I mean, I didn't go to, like, certain proms. I didn't get to be a cheerleader. I didn't get to do a lot of things that normal kids do in high school because I was rehearsing all the time and we were performing or we were traveling. But I wouldn't have given that up for the world. Like, it was the, it was the funnest thing I could have done. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. And I, it seemed like I kind of got my feet wet really quick. So then when I, I did book a show like Power Rangers, which was very demanding, um, you know, we'd work 12, 15 hour days easily, you know, um, it, it didn't bother me. I, I, I had a great work ethic. I loved doing it. I wanted to do nothing but be on stage or be on the sound stage and I wanted to run my lines all the time. So for me, it just really kind of prepared me for the life that I, I really wanted, which was, you know, life of a performer. And you said that acting kind of, kind of came into the picture when you booked an audition for Sister Act. Had you thought about acting beforehand or were you main, so were you based, mainly set on music? You know, I really did think about it all the time. Like, I, I knew I wanted to get into other facets, but when I was in the group, the group, we were very, um, like, we rehearsed all the time, and we were very serious about, you know, um, you know, really learning how to, to do, be in the studio and learning, you know, our different parts and in in the songs. And so it took up a lot of our time, so I didn't really have the time to audition but when I did audition, they were, it was funny because they approached us and they were like, well, we're looking for singing groups and we're looking for singers, you know, to be in this, you know, second edition of Sister Act. And we were like, oh, my gosh, like, oh, I'd love to do it. And, and we ended up having to tape our audition. And so it was kind of cool that we did it that way because it wasn't like we had to go into an audition, a, a, you know, normal audition. We actually got to tape it and then send it to them. And they liked it, and then they asked us, you know, tape another scene, and so we got to tape another scene. But it didn't end up panning out. Like, we obviously didn't get the part, but I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, that is just another facet. Like, I was that kid who was always, like, singing in the mirror, or I was, you know, designing clothes, or I was I was just a very creative person. So, for me, I needed, I needed a different outlet other than singing and dancing. I really needed to do a bunch of different things. I, I, I think that's just kind of the way that I'm, I'm made. So, yeah, I mean, the minute I did that audition, I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to be an actress at some point in my life. And little did I know that was where my big break would come. So how did you find out about the audition for Power Rangers? Had you heard of the show beforehand? I didn't. No, I had no idea. I don't know where I was. I think I was under a rock somewhere. But, <laughs> I mean, it was obviously a huge show. And um, a friend of mine, it's so funny, and we're still friends to this day, my friend Felicia, she called me and she was like, look, there's this TV show, we're having an audition, you know, this weekend, you should really go. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, no, it's, it's Power Rangers, it's a big show, it's a big kid show. And I was like, oh, really? And she was like, yeah, you know, they're asking for, you know, dancers, uh, martial artists, or gymnasts, and I mean, you're a dancer, you should do this. It, you're perfect, you're the right age, and... You know, she was very, like, you got to do this. you got to do this. So I'm like, okay. And so I did. I went, and, I mean, it was so funny because I drove up, and I don't know what I was thinking, but most of the auditions I had been going on, you know, you go, you drive up, you go, you get in there, you do your audition, then you leave, maybe spend an hour. Well, I drive up, and there's, like, probably 5,000 people waiting to audition for this show. And, I mean, the line was wrapped around the building. You had to take a number. It was, like... I mean, it was, like, the craziest thing, and, and there were all these people in martial arts, you know, like, you know, geese, and I was like, oh, my gosh, did they re I mean, do they need a martial artist? Because I don't know how to do karate. Like, I was freaking out. And they were like, no, 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 we want, you know, dancers, martial artists, and gymnasts, 
and, you know, you just have to wait in line. It's, it's a big open call. And, I mean, when I say big open call, it was huge. So I was like, okay. So I ended up spending the whole afternoon there. And um, luckily for me, I was in line with, you know, you get in line and you're in line with people. You just immediately start talking. And this one gentleman, I'll never forget him, but he was, like, basically telling us, I had said, well, I don't know much about the show. So literally for the couple hours that I was waiting there, he told me everything from start to finish about this show. So when I went in, I had a good grasp of what kind of show it was. You know, they wanted teenagers and, you know, and so I was like, okay, you know, let's go. Let's do this. And it, it was the funniest audition because I brought, you know, music to dance to because I you knew we had to read like a little script. They gave us a script and it was like maybe three lines, you know, really generic kind of script. And then we had to do our talent, which was, you know, if you danced and you had to dance. So I thought, oh, I have music. And when I get in front of the casting director, I'm like, I say my lines. He's like, oh, great. That was great. Can you dance? And I was like, yeah. So I'm like, here's my music. And she goes, oh, we don't have a radio. And so I just had to, like, dance. Like, no music, hit it, you know. So it was hilarious. Hey, just just like, give me a bait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I was like, can you pound on the table something? But nothing. Like, you literally just had to go for it. And I think that was their way of either you're going to make, make you or break you. You know, because I'm sure some people probably got, you know, thrown by that. But I was like, okay, whatever, and I just hit it, you know. And I really will say it was that work ethic that I had in Crush because we had to do that all the time. Like, we had to dance. We had, you know, there were times that we would be performing and the sound would go out. And you had to keep going. The audience wasn't going to stop and let them fix the microphone. You had to keep going. And so we had to sing a cappella. So I, I just danced, and she looked at me, and she was like, can you come back later this afternoon? And I was like, yeah. So I knew right then it was a good sign because I had a call back. And so when I came back later that afternoon, you know, the couple, you know, at 5,000 went to about 100. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I did the same thing, but this time they had music. So I really, like, turned it up, you know, having the music on. And um, I, I auditioned. I went home. I felt good. And I just was like, well, we'll just wait and see. And I think it was maybe two days later, they called me really early in the morning. It was like 8 in the morning. They were like, you know, can you fly out tomorrow to audition for the producers? They would like to see you. And I was like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> and um, the audition probably at this point, was, there was probably about, you know, 15 of us, maybe maybe 20. I think it was about 15. Um and there were, you know, a group of girls and two different guys, and, and me, Johnny Bosch, and Steve Cardenas, we all were cast out of Dallas. Um, but we went to L.A., and we auditioned, and, and literally we auditioned all day. And we went in by ourselves, and then we went in together as a group, and then they kind of mixed up the groups, and we went in again and did the th same thing again. And by that afternoon, they sat us all in a room, and they said, you know, you, you, and you, you got the part. Tell your parents to FedEx your clothes. <laughs> You're not going home. We're <laughs> keeping you. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't go home. We had to work that next week. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. My God. What an four ordeal. Days. I know. My, my life, I tell people all the time, my life changed in four days. So you just have to be ready. Like, you have to be ready for opportunity because you just never know. Because you, you said you were a dancer, did you have to learn a lot of stuff going into the show to turn that into, I guess, martial arts? Absolutely. Um, the great thing about the way that they shot the fight scenes were we would shoot it in segments. So for them, they felt like, well, she knows how to, you know, she knows how to learn choreography. So as long as she can learn kick, kick, punch, duck, you know, you know, it was shot in segments, so it wasn't like you had to fight for 10 minutes straight. It was like you had to, you know, do a couple punches and then they'd move the camera. Do a couple kicks and then they'd move the camera. So they really shot it in a really cool way to, to help you out. But absolutely, I mean, I was immediately on set with the stunt team, learning fights. I, I didn't want to seem like um, a dancer who was pretending to be a martial artist. I wanted to seem like I really knew what I was doing or I really knew how to fight. So I really worked really hard just to try to, you know, be as, get my kicks higher and, you know, be as authentic as I could. Because you were, I guess, you were, you were still young, you were probably 17 or 18 when you got the part on Power Rangers, but you'd mm -hmm. already been exposed to the industry 
through Crust. So you knew a lot about the industry. Did it bother you that Power Rangers was a non-union show? Oh, yeah. But you know what I, I thought? I just looked at it this way. At the time, it was um, the number one kid show in the world. <laughs> and so I knew signing on, I was signing on um, for the TV show, and I also knew that I was signing on for the movie that was going to be shot, you know, in two months with 20th Century Fox. So for me, I really just said, you know what, this, this is the, if you're going to kick your career off, I mean, this is the way you do it, you know. Um, they were notoriously known, you know, to not be the highest paying show. And, you know, you, I'm sure you've heard other actors and maybe even me complain about how we just didn't get paid a lot of money. But, you know, one thing we did get was a lot of exposure. And, you know, we're cemented in history um, as being something that is so huge to so many people. You know, I've met thousands and thousands of people who have been affected by Power Rangers, and it was the show they grew up on. And so, you know, for me, I just was like, you know what, if you're going to do anything, this is the, the time to, to kind of pay your dues and bite the bullet and, and, and be on the number one kids show in America, you know? Do you have any, I guess, hard feelings towards Saban or, or the, the producing team because it was a non-union show? Do you think you should have been actually paid more, or are you happy now that you're cemented in history and you can get, you can, I guess, make all the money back through all the cons that you do? Well, we'll never make that kind of money. Um, you know, even as successful as we can be at conventions, you know, they made, you know, three billion dollars off of Power Rangers. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I would be lying if I, I said, you know, there wasn't some feeling that all of us share. Um, but at this point, you know, what what can you do? You know, it, it, it was 20 years ago, and, um, yeah, I would love for Savon to call me and say, hey, let me write you this check. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your hard work. I should have given you this 20 years ago, yeah. but hey. <laughs> Here's we'll a blank check. My signature's on it. You can right. put in whatever number you want. <laughs> Right, exactly. I would love for that phone call to happen. I don't think it, that it ever will, but, you know, that's okay. Um, I, I do believe that, you know, not very many people can say they were a superhero. And for me, not very many people can say that I was, you know, the first black female superhero, teenage superhero in history. You know, Walter Jones and I, we talk about that all the time. Like, he's the first black male superhero. I'm the first female. Like, we have something that is historical. Um, you know, we have fans that come up to us and say, I never saw anyone that looked like me be on a television show and, you know, save the world every week. And, and I have young girls that come up to me all the time and go, you know, it's so cool. The girls weren't you know, victims, they were, they would save the world too, you know, and you girls were equals to the guys and, you know, it just gave me such inspiration or, you know, there are kids that come to me and say I was bullied and, you know, Power Rangers got me into martial arts and it changed my life and it gave me confidence and, I mean, it's just so many, I mean, I could give you a million stories that I hear. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I th that's probably the only regret is I wish we could have fought, you know, to get, you know, a union uh, contract, and I wish we could have done different things, but you know what? I really can't dwell on that. Um, my, I've done so many other things in life since then, and and I just I just am so I have such fond memories of the the friendships I built on that show, and the people that I work with that now I run into, and like we're all doing you know such different things, and I mean it's just so amazing. So I mean I I. I I just have, you know, I have a smile on my face when I talk about the show. When you came into the show, uh, you were you were basically a whole new character, but you were replacing Trini, who was played by Twee Trang. Were you told by the producers, were you, were you basically given any traits of Trini that you had to keep in your character to kind of make it flow more, or were you a whole new character just playing the same ranger? No, they, um, we didn't really know we were replacing anyone until we kind of got the parts and then we got the backstory that they had kind of fought for renegotiating their contracts and the negotiation failed. And 
were no longer on the show, had left the show. Um, so then we were like, oh, wow, we're replacing people. And, and you know, I, I, for a second I was kind of, like, nervous because she was such a loved character, you know. But at that moment I realized, like, I was kind of like, you know what, I'm not going to be treaty. Like, I'm not going to. I, I, you know, she and I are two totally different people, and I think the best thing for me to do is just to be something completely different. And, and our personalities are different, and we were two different individuals. And so I really wanted to make Aisha different. And the funny thing was the producers really wanted me to do it as well. They really kind of let me do my thing, and um, they encouraged any time, you know, I wanted her to be a little bit more sassy, and I – you know, want her to be, you know, just, I don't know. I just kind of wanted her to be a, a lot more bubbly and, and they were fine with it. They were like, great, whatever you think. And, you know, there were times that they would, you know, write certain things. And I was like, Oh, do you think I could say this instead? And, you know, it might've been the same way of saying it, but maybe just the uh, same, you know, kind of the same thing, but maybe just a different way of saying it. And they were like, sure. You know, so they were very supportive. Um, they did want me to do something a little different. Did you ever get to talk to Troy? talk to Twee and, I guess, pick her brain about the culture of the show at all? You know, I didn't. I, I, I got to meet her once, but it was very briefly, and it was really like maybe a month or two after um, the show had, they had left the show. And it was, you know, it was kind of, it was bittersweet for them because they wanted to be on the show. They had made the show successful, and, you know, they did what everybody would have done was renegotiated try to renegotiate because the show was a much huger success than anyone had ever expected it to be. And, and as a result, it didn't work out. So it was a very tough thing. And then here I am, the new girl on the block who's kind of, you know, wearing the costume that she wore, literally. <laughs> um, but, no, she was very nice. Like, we, we met each other at a party. Um, one of the stunt guys was having a party, and we met each other, and it was very brief. It was like, hi, hi, and we shook hands and, and kind of, you know, shared some small talk, and, and then we went on, you know, uh, we went on. Um, but I, I never got to really know her, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about her. And now that I've gotten to really know Walter and Austin, I know she was a great, a great girl, and um, I wish I could have met her. I wish we could have, I wish we could have all worked together. You know, it would have been so amazing for all of us to have been on the same, you know, cast in some, some way, you know. Um, they were amazing. They're amazing people. When you came into the show, you, you said the show was already a huge hit around the world. You came in about halfway through the second season. Overall, what do you remember about your whole experience of being Aisha prior to, I guess, the movie happening? How long did it take you to get into the show, to get into the culture, to get used to the fans? to, I guess, get used to the demand and all that kind of stuff before you would ship to Australia for the movie? Oh, we, we didn't know, uh, the fans didn't know us until we came back from shooting the movie because what they did was we got on and, like, we literally had two months before we had to go to shoot the movie. So we worked six days a week, and, I mean, we shot so many episodes. I think it was, like, 25 episodes in a matter of two months, which is crazy or 30 episodes, I forget how much it was, but it was a really tough, demanding schedule. And then they shipped us off to Australia, and we started filming the movie, and then we got behind schedule in shooting, and we even had to start shooting episodes there. Um, so it was just one of those things. It wasn't until we came back um, from shooting the movie that our episodes actually started airing. So by the time we came back, then people knew who we were, you know. But prior to that, we were just kind of thrown in, and we were always behind the eight ball. I don't know that we really got a chance to um, soak up anything, you know. It was like, okay, let's work, let's work, let's work. You know, we got we got to get these episodes done. I mean, you got to remember back then, we were on TV um, seven days or five days a week, you know. So it was an episode every day. Um, so it was just one of those things where. Uh, I mean, we just we we couldn't keep up with the demand and the success of the show. And then, I guess, mo mo being shipped off to Australia, moving to Australia for seven months with then people you didn't really know and had to get to know pretty quickly with the rest of the cast was that was yeah. that a tough experience for you, or do you, was it was it more fun, more partying than than oh, I guess we would amazing. expect? <laughs> right. No, it was amazing because that 
forced us. I mean, at, at the end of the day, like you said, we didn't really know each other. I mean, we worked together a couple months, but that was the moment we were all like, it was like us and, you know, Australia. It was like, we only knew each other, you know, and we were with a, an entirely new crew and we were shooting with 20th Century Fox, which was a whole nother set of producers. We were all fish out of water at this point. So it, it really forced us, um, to get to know each other and to bond. And I think it was great. And I think sharing that experience was such an amazing experience and such a, it's something that we always talk about and it's something that we'll never forget. You know, for, for mo- a lot of us, it was the first time we'd ever been out of the country. So it was like, you know, this was just such a, a great, a great way to bond the cast. And we did, we became really good friends and we're really happy and really excited about, you know, uh, forming a new team, you know, it's kind of like, okay, let's let's do this. How are we going to figure this out? Let's, who's good at what? And you know, it just became a really cool thing. And after the third season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which kind of led on from the movie, you left the show. I've heard you say you weren't happy with the conditions that produce, uh, with the conditions, with the yeah, with the producers. Were, the, were they expecting you to stay on for Zio? What was your contract like? Was it different to Catherine yeah, no, Sutherland's? I was, I, I was signed to be on there until forever. Um, but I wasn't happy just because, you know, things were a lot different for the movie. Like, we had, you know, we were getting paid a lot more money for the movie. We were treated a lot better. Um, and then when we came back from doing the movie, everything was still the same. And, you know... Um, they were wanting us to work a lot and do a lot of, you know, things that weren't episode related and we weren't being offered any compensation to do those things. And it was just very difficult, you know, and it just was getting kind of, um, I don't know. I always say I felt like, you know, we were just a, a, a commercial to them or we were just a way of selling toys to them. We were never treated like, you know, thank you for working so hard and thank you for, you know, bringing these characters to life. You know, there was none of that, you know, for me, at least I didn't think it was. And so I just kind of got to a point where I was um, getting unhappy and I asked to, you know, be released from my contract. And um, we had a meeting or two and, um, you know, said, okay, well, we'll, we'll release you and we'll dedicate 10 episodes to kind of gently write your character out so that it makes sense. Um, the next time I went to set, that was my last day and they didn't, you know, do what they promised. Um, it was just over. So, you know, it's just, that's how Hollywood works, I guess. And, um, that's kind of the same way that the other three were kind of treated. So I wasn't surprised. Um, and it was just it, you know, and, and, but yeah, I was, I was supposed to do it all of that. Um, it just didn't happen. And was it was it hard being the only one to leave at that time? That you were you were kind of leaving by yourself, as opposed to when the other three left, they all left together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was I was upset because, like I said, I was promised ten episodes, and those ten episodes never happened. I literally came back to the show, and it was over. And I I didn't even I, I my last day I was shooting by myself. I didn't even get to say goodbye to anyone. You know, so yeah, absolutely. It was it was horrible. Um, but like I said, I wasn't surprised. Um, I, you know, I think they are just a company that just makes swift moves and they just kind of move on and turn the page and they don't look back. So over the next six years after Power Rangers, you had a few cameos here and there in various, various TV shows, movies. You did a few movies as well, but I was reading your, your IMDb page and it looked like you slowly weaned off acting. I think you went more behind the scenes. Was that by choice? Well, I decided to start writing my own opportunities. Like, I feel like you're crazy in this, you know, day and age. Um, you know, digital cameras, you can get the same camera that they're shooting on a television show. And I felt like, you know, um, I was getting a lot of success, you know, working and doing commercials. I did a lot of commercials. And I just felt like, you know, again, it's just so limited for, um, you know, African-American actresses. You don't see a lot of us on TV. and There's not a lot of parts. And so one day a friend of mine was like, well, why don't you write your own part, you know? 
And so that is when I kind of got into producing. And I, I, you know, I, I produced um, two movies that I wrote, co-wrote with people. And I, you know, have done, um, you know, a television show that I'm shopping now um, to sell. And, you know, I got into doing, you know, online radio. And I got into doing just a bunch of different things. I mean, I'm just one of those people that... I don't want to sit at home and kind of twiddle my thumbs and wait for my agent to call me. I kind of want to get it going, you know? And so there have been a lot of projects that I've I've done that, you know, maybe you've seen or maybe you haven't seen. But, I mean, the great thing is I've been able to work and I've been able to stay in the business and kind of been able to do do it the way that I want to do it, you know? What did you do between, I guess, 2002 and 2010 when you got onto the convention scene? I read that you did do a bit of production, but I couldn't find a lot of information about you during that time. Um, well, I produced two movies, uh, one of which me and Johnny Bosch acted in. It was called Devin's Ghost. Um, I did a lot of things. I mean, I did a show called Grow Up Already, like I said, that we're doing – um, I did a, you know, like it's like every year I do different pilots. Like, you know, you get into pilot season and you audition and you do a pilot and it may get sold. It may not, you know, um, IMDB, I'm not really big on feeding, you know, a lot of the stuff they have on there is inaccurate. And a lot of the stuff, like I said, they have on there isn't even listed, you know, but, um, I'm like every other actor. I pound the pavement, you know, you pound the pavement and you do what you you do what you do, you know. And they they don't list your commercial work because, you know, it doesn't matter if you book a national commercial with Chevrolet or if you book a commercial with AT and T. It doesn't matter, you know. They only list movies and TV. And then in 2010, you received an invite to the second Power Morphicon convention and have pretty much been on the convention circuit ever since. What are some of the pros and cons for you uh, about the convention circuit? Well, actually, I started doing conventions probably, um, I started doing them, gosh, 10 years ago. Um, I One day, Steve Cardenas called me and was like, hey, it was right after the first Power Morphicon, and um, he was like, or it might have been right before, but he was like, hey, you know, this guy hit me up and wants to know if you want to come to Chicago and do a convention. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah. He was like, you're, you're not going to believe it. I mean, people really want to meet us. And I'm like, get out of here. And he said, no, actually they do. You know, me and um, and J- Jason David Frank are doing it, and they want a girl. And, you know, can you do it? And it was so funny because he, he found me on MySpace of all places. And um, I started doing them. And, and you know what? The, the beautiful thing is, I mean, obviously it, it was mind-blowing to me because that first convention was in Chicago, and they literally, um, it was like the weirdest thing. They literally had a six-hour wait. Um, people were waiting in line for six hours just to get our autograph and just to meet us and just to take a picture with us. Um, I probably did about ten conventions before I did the second Power Morphicon. It's just Power Morphicon is just on such a, like, anybody who's anybody who knows Power Rangers, it's like, Power Morphicon is the one convention that's geared strictly to Power Rangers. So it gets like it's like the it's like the Disneyland of of if you're a Power Rangers fan, <laughs> like you go there and it's all things Power Rangers and you're gonna see everybody and their mama. Um and it's just been a great it's just been a great thing because it's like 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 I said again, you just don't know that people are wanting to meet you and you just didn't I didn't know that people were such such huge fans. Like, it's like the show came out yesterday. It's like, you know, um, they, I mean, it's the weirdest thing. I, I, I am blown away. But what I found is that things that, you know, people grew up on, it's held so closely to their heart that they, you know, Power Rangers mean so much to so many people, you know, and they, they like, they grew up on it, like a lot of the life lessons that we did when we were talking about PSAs and, like, all these different things that have, have, have really affected people. Um, so for me, it's been a, a positive thing, you know. Um, I go, I, I mean, right now I, I go out of town um, probably at least three times a month, um, and 
I'm traveling all over the world um, doing conventions. Like, I never, if you would have told me I would be doing that, um, I never would have believed it. Um, but it's true. It's like, it, it just, it's just the craziest thing. And does it kind of, I guess, does it bring back bad memories of, like, your time? You said it, it was tough for you and you weren't really respected as actors. Is that an issue doing that? Does it kind of bring back bad memories oh, even though none of the absolutely. fans know about it? No, no, because no. they don't have anything to do with that. I mean, think about sitting at a table and sitting there for, you know, eight hours and every single person who comes up to you tells you, how you changed their life. Absolutely not. None of that negative stuff has anything to do with the fans. None of it has anything to do with the convention. None of it has anything to do with the, the you know, the lasting um, impression you left on someone's life. You know, it's all positive. It's all amazing. Um, like I said, those kind of things, you know, when I had enough, I left. And that was that. I don't have any ill feelings towards the producers. I don't have any ill feelings towards anyone because the reality is, is it's business. You know, one thing you learn really quick in life is that it's business. And, you know, sometimes business is fun and sometimes business is, you know, warm and fuzzy. And a lot of times, most of the time, it's not. It's business. And that's just what it was for them. So, no, I mean, if anything... Um, the convention has has reestablished my love for the show. And moving moving back to Power Morphicon, why in your in your opinion, why do you think Power Rangers of all other cult T V shows can demand its own convention? Well, I think it's because at the time it was the first of its kind. Like, I mean, think about it. I tell, like, there, there was somebody who interviewed me at Power Morphicon, and they were like, what do you think some of the lessons were that Power Rangers taught people? And, I mean, it was funny because I watched it, and it was like some people were like, you know, we obviously taught you, you know, taught, we try to really instill self-confidence. And, you know, it was like some of the girls were like, it was like girl power. You know, the girls were, were strong, and they weren't victims. They were really, you know, superheroes and you know, my thing was, I what I found that was so cool about Power Rangers is you had, you know, five, sometimes six teenagers who, on a daily basis, saved the world. But if you look at each and every one of them, they were all of different ethnicities. They were all of different backgrounds. It was like the smart guy, the girl next door, the jock, the, you know, it was like everybody was... Like we shouldn't have been friends if you if you think about it, you know, because usually that that many different personalities don't come together. But in this moment on that show, it did, and we all each individually had a color, and there was individually someone you could identify with, you know. And I don't know that any other show has done that since. And I think in in all of our hearts, we've all hoped, and when you're a little bitty kid, you all dreamed of being that hero, you know. And we got to do it each and every week. And then, I mean, it was fun. It was like the fun show. It was funny and it was cheesy and it was campy. And it was, I mean, it's just, it was a perfect, 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 perfect um, moment in time. And, and, and that shows, I mean, you look at the success of the show. It's 20 years later and it's still relevant and it's still on the air and it's still going strong. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And recently, over, over the past few months, you got to meet, I believe, Austin St. John for the first time. Was it? Yeah. What What was the feeling like finally meeting, 20 years on meeting? You said you met Twee once before, but meeting Walter mm -hmm. Jones and meeting Austin St. John. You know, it's funny. It's like once you ha get in the family, <laughs> it's like you're just in the family, you know? And so for me, it was just kind of like... Um, meeting a member of the family. Like, we have this Power Ranger family, and I remember at the last Palomorphicon a few months ago, we're all sitting in the green room kind of eating lunch, like, you know, because it's such a busy day. And they had a, a beautiful green room set up so that we could kind of get away for a second because, I mean, it was literally mayhem. And we're all sitting in there at the same time, and the, the new cast of Dino Charge walks by, 
and they look at us and they wave and they're like sweet and innocent and cute. And they're like, hi. And we're like, hi. And at first we didn't know who they were. And um, they go, that's the new cast. And they were kind of whisking them away to kind of uh, do this, um, do this like, uh, you know, kind of unveil them for the first time. And I just remember looking at Camille, who was, you know, the new Pink Ranger, and I looked at her, and she looked at me, and I go, welcome to the family, girl. And she starts laughing. She goes, thank you, and then they leave. But that's how it was. I mean, when I saw Matt Austin, he looked at me and was like, hey, girl, and I we hug, and, you know, I'm like, how are you? And, you know, um, I ended up doing my, my web series, Uncensored Talk. We ended up shooting it the day we met. And I purposely set it up that way because I didn't want for us to know each other very well. I wanted for the audience and for the fans to see us meet, you know, and kind of get to know each other for the first time um, on camera. And um, it made for a great moment. And um, But he's, he's such a – I mean, he's probably one of the nicest, most down-to-earth people that you'll ever meet. Um, the – the celebrity he's had uh, being, you know, Jason, his character, and being the original leader has affected him, like, not at all. And he's just a normal, down-to-earth guy. Like, he's a really cool guy. Like, he's the guy you call if you get a flat tire. He'll come and help you change your tire. Like, he's that guy, <laughs> you know? And what, what, what about Walter? I, you, you mentioned you oh. were both the, the, the original black superheroes. Have you, have you shared, yeah. shared a beer over, over some of those stories as well with Walter? Yeah, absolutely. Walter is amazing. He, he and I met quite a few years ago. Like, I think Walter and I have probably known each other for, um, I think we may have met, I think it was Anime Expo or one of those shows, but we met, um, we met prior to, like, probably four or five years ago. I don't know. It's been a minute. Needless to say, when I met him, when we saw each other, he knew who I was. I knew who he was. And we just instantly hugged and and instantly became friends. Like, we instantly were, you know, just, how are you? How is life? How is things? You know, and we, you know, luckily for us, we kind of worked together for the last few years. And he's really become, like, I, I call him my brother from another mother. Like, he is truly a brother to me, um, and I love having Walter around because he is, like, the guy you want to go out with. He is so much fun. He, you, go, you go to any city in America or any city in the world, and Walter Jones knows somebody. Like, he knows somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to get you in the club. You're going to get to go VIP. You're going to have bottle <laughs> service. He's going to show you a good time. Like, no doubt, no question, Walter Jones has the connection. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, hilarious. Like, like, we go anywhere, and we'll be at freaking wherever, and they're like, oh, my God, that's a Black Ranger. Come on in. Your dinner's cropped. And then they'll, like, ten minutes later go, oh, my God, that's the rest of you. And we'll all be like, yeah, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> they have to be like, Walter's got it. Walter is the most recognizable ranger you'll ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I want you to be honest for this que- for this next question. What's the weirdest thing or body part you've been asked to sign? Oh gosh! What's um, the thing that's kind of kind of shook you a little bit? Well, what shook me was like over the last few years, people coming up to us and going, "Sign my arm! I'm about to go get this tattooed." <laughs> and like, I literally have pictures. I I start like people didn't believe me. And I would say, no, these people are getting us tattooed on their body. They're like, yeah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm serious. So I, now I take pictures of it just because I'm like, they don't believe that I just signed your arm and that you're about to go to the tattoo parlor to get a tattoo. So let me take a picture of this so that people will start believing me. And sure enough, I've got like three of them in my phone right now. I can send them to you. <laughs> that, that's... Like, it's the craziest thing. I can't imagine getting a tattoo I mean, I, there are some people I look up to, but I can't imagine getting them to sign my arm and I'm going to go get this a tattooed on my arm now. Like, I just, I, I think that's crazy. I tell them not to. I'm, like, trying to talk them out of it. I'm like, you don't need to do this. It's forever. Like, well, he's, he's a poster. He's a poster. To take that me. instead. <laughs> right. I don't even want my own name tattooed on myself, more or less on someone else. Like, I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, that that would be that's like the I, that's like the ultimate for any up and coming yeah. person. Just, like, what you, like I was having a conversation with this guy. I'm like, what are you gonna do forty years from now? Like that's gonna still be there. Like, yeah, yeah, are you yeah. are you really really? Is that serious? They're gonna have and to explain like, who yeah. Karen Ashley is. <laughs> Like, who is this girl? Who is this? Like, no one's going to know. Well, they may or may not know what Power Rangers are by that time. But they're going to be like, who is this? Like, and it's like me, Austin, Walter, David. Like, it's like seven names on his arm. Crazy. <laughs> and what, what, if, what, if, what if he forgets who they were, who they are? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, what if, he, yeah. What if dementia sets in and you don't even know what this is on your arm and you go, what the hell? Like, come on. Like, I, I try to talk them out of it, but they do it. Like, I've got, I'm telling you, I've got photo evidence. People don't believe me, happen. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got a friend who, who's who's kind of like that who wants who wants to get something signed on his arm so he can get it tattooed, but we won't go into that. So yeah, <laughs> it, it's weird. How long do you think you can do the convention circuit for? You said you're out of town, out of LA, probably three or four times a month. How do you juggle that with you know your radio commitments, your TV commitments, your producing commitments, and writing commitments, and everything like that? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> what I've done is that when I do uncensored talk, I do uncensored talk on the road. So I actually do it at the convention. Um, it kind of struck me after I did the Austin interview. Like, I was like, why am I not interviewing anybody else? Like, here I am at this convention, and there are all these amazing actors, all these amazing people from different genres other than Power Rangers that have made a mark in people's lives. And, I mean, I look over at their line, and people are in line for them to get their autograph and getting tattoos of them as well. <laughs> why am I not talking to these people? So I, I decided, like, I decided, okay, every couple shows I have a crew that comes out um, that will we'll video, and we'll just kind of set up shop, and it's like, okay, bring them over, and we do interviews with them, and we try to get at least, you know, a couple interviews done a day. Um, but it's, it's, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, this month alone, like, well, the next few months, I'm out of town for the next nine weekends um, straight, and it's difficult because, I mean, I'll say I'm, I'm, I'm gone four days out of the set, four out of seven days, you know, so it's like, Three days at home and, you know, four days gone. And then, you know, it's just very difficult. But, you know, I, I just look at it like I, I, I know this won't last forever. And um, so I'm like, why not? Why not, you know, live this experience and meet all these amazing people, um, travel the world? Why not, you know? Um, I think with the success of the show on Netflix, it kind of gave it a, a whole new lease on life. Like Power Rangers just like boosted, like it's, it's like it came back to life, you know, um, especially the Mighty Morphin series. So it's just one of those things that I feel like with that and with the, the new movie coming out, we may be, be able to do this a couple of years, but I mean, I, just, I don't think it's a lifelong career. I just think it's something that it's an amazing opportunity that's right in front of me and the rest of us right now. And why not like do it, you know, just, just do it. <laughs> I mean, it, it it must it must be fun. I mean, do you treat it like a, a job, or do you treat it as in just a hobby that you, no, you like doing? I just, no, I treat it like a job because I want I honestly want everyone's experience to be amazing. I want if 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 Power Rangers changed your life, I want when you finally get to meet a Power Ranger for it to be another life changing moment. So. I very much take it like a job. Like I said, I, we usually fly out the day before and, you know, I go to bed early and we go to the con. We're there all day. You know, we're not one, some of those groups who, you know, and I'm not saying this is bad or good, but, you know, we don't go and sign for a few hours. We're there all day, you know. We actually want to sit and talk to people and we're there all weekend. And um, we really get to know fans and we really have people who kind of follow us around the country. Like I – know people on first name basis. I know about their life. I know about their kids. I know about their boyfriends and girlfriends. And I know what they do for a living. And I meet them, you know, at the different cons. I mean, it's a really, it's, it's the most amazing thing you'll ever, I mean, I, 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 I feel so blessed every day. I feel so humbled every day because it's just, it blows my mind that, um, this show, I, we didn't know it was this impactful. 
Um, and like I said, it made me fall in love with the show again, doing these cons, and it, it, it renewed my, um, my I don't know, it just renewed my spirit on what I contributed to, you know, and I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful for that. Now, I, I want to move on to your, your radio career, which I'm very interested about talking about being a, a radio, a radio, um, a radio nut myself. Where, yeah. where does your passion for radio stem from? You know, I had the opportunity to do a lot of radio. Um, I actually would get, um, you know, just invited by different DJs and stuff to come and sit in, and especially in Texas. I'm from Dallas. And I, I knew a lot of them really well. And so they would be like, hey, I'm going out of town this week. Would you come and sit in for me? And I was like, heck yeah, you know. Because for me, it was like it was like being on, on TV or being in a movie, but you didn't have to, like, put your makeup on, you know. <laughs> you didn't have to sit through five hours of makeup and hair and all that, you know. But you got to put on a show, and you got to laugh and talk to people and interview people. And so I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And, um I would go and sit in, and so I really, I really, really um, have a passion for it. And I got on Uncensored Radio simply because um, they were fans of, of the show and fans of Power Rangers, and they kind of asked me, will you come on as a guest? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, so I came on, and I did the show with them, and it was great, and we had fun, and they were like, oh, my gosh, we'd love to have you as a co-host one day just to come and, you know, sit out. And, and I was like, great. And at the time, I really wanted to build my um, – you know, build my, my reel. Like, I always feel like if you're going to do something, then do it enough to where you can have it. And if you ever want to get into radio, you can go, oh, well, listen to me. Here, here's how I sound on radio. Um, you know, here's my interviewing. You know, this is how I interview. Or this is what I do, you know. And um, a couple of, of guest hosting turned into, you think you could do this, you know, a couple times a week? And then can you do this all the time? And you know, two years later, I was I I'd been, I we did a, a a million episodes, you know, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun working with different co-hosts and the way that that format uncensored was was set up. Is it was uncensored, you know? You really got to speak your mind, and things got really heated at times, or things got really funny at times, or things got very you know deep at times, and and it was just my biggest thing was. I, I when I kind of came on and, and really became a producer of the show, I always felt the conversation we have needs to be the conversation you would have with your closest friends. And, you know, this radio show is kind of that fly on the wall. You get to sneak in on the conversation close friends would have. It needs to be that honest and it needs to be that true. It needs to be that uncensored. And a lot of times people, like someone asked me at Con Morphicon, they were like, because now I'm doing uncensored talk, they were like, why uncensored? It sounds like it's bad. It sounds like it's going to be you know, cussing and, you know. And I was like, no, it's it's just raw. Whatever it is, that it's just real. And I want it to be that intimate conversation you'd have with your friends. You know, I don't want it to be like the standard interview and yeah, yeah, yeah. I want it to be, I want you, if you laugh, I want you to laugh hard. I want you to, like, laugh so hard, you know, you, you bend over, you know, I want it to be that, you know, I want it to be, you know, whatever it is for you. Um, whatever you're passionate about, I want you to say it, you know, there's no rules here. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. I don't care. And and it's been a great thing, you know, and um, I've got quite a number of more episodes coming out um, over the next few months. And I, it's just been really fun for me to kind of now do it on camera, you know. Can you explain to me what blog talk radio is? Being uh, in Australia, I don't think internet radio is such a big about. Well, it's just internet radio. Um, there's several of them out there, um, but it's like uh, Rosie O'Donnell. The reason we found Blog Talk is Rosie O'Donnell did uh, a show on there called The Rosie Show, um, and it's just it's like it's like um, I think here in America we. You know how YouTube is? Like, everybody posts things on YouTube. It's the same thing. It's just people are posting radio shows on Blog Talk. Um, it's just another way of doing it, but you do it on the radio. I mean, you do it online as opposed to, you know, having to be on a station, having to get on there. Um, you know, and that kind of gave us our freedom of being able to talk about whatever we wanted to talk about and, you know, be able to do whatever we wanted to do. 
online radio, there, there's just not any, no, there's no rule. There's nobody telling you what to do. And now, now you've turned your radio show, as you mentioned, into a reality series called Uncensored Talk. Where did, where mm-hmm. did this idea come from? I mean, I've, I've watched the ad for it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It looks quite emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what it was? It was basically like we would get together. Um, the host of the, the radio show was me. I lived in L.A. There was Katrina Johnson, who used to be on All That, um, and she was in Vegas. And then the two guys who originally came up with Uncensored Radio, which was Jeffrey Emmett and Michael um, Cummings, um, Mike J., they were, Mike Jay was in Rhode Island and Jeffrey was in Auburn, New York. So we were literally in four different parts of the United States. We didn't even live in the same city, but we would call in every day. And that was the other thing about, you know, Block Talk Radio. It made it easy because we could call in and do a radio show from anywhere. You know, you just had to call in or you just had to log in on your computer and start your show. And so um, we... You know, it was one of those things that when we would get together and when we would be under the same roof, it was hilarious or it was a hot mess. You know, it was like all these personalities and all this, you know, craziness. And so one day we were like, why aren't we filming this? Like, this is just, you know, the making of this little online, you know, radio show is is something that people need to see because it does take, you know, it's, it's different if you're hired by a company and you show up to work. And, you know, when I would go to those other, fill in for those other radio stations, you know, they would say, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that, and here's your segment, and this needs to be this long, and then you're going to take a call. And it was very produced. Where this was, it was what we'd make it. And we had to learn how to produce it. And we had to learn how to not talk over each other. We had to learn how to you know, because we weren't in the same room. Like, we weren't in the same studio. So if I had something to say and he had something to say, you know, we very well could be all over each other because, you know, we're on the, you know, on a phone, you know, or, you know, you're on the Internet. Um, so it was it was work to – and it was literally we were making something out of nothing. Like, okay, now we have 100 listeners. Oh, my gosh, now we have 10,000 listeners. People are tuning in. Oh, my God, what do we do? You know, it was one of those things. And um, so we filmed it. You know, we got together, they came to L.A., and they actually came down for Power Morphicon, um, like, uh, now two years ago, and um, we filmed it. And we filmed two, you know, like, one and a half weeks of, of just the making of Uncensored Radio, which was Uncensored Reality. And um, and it's crazy, because when you work with friends, you know, you think it's going to be great and wonderful, and it doesn't always end up great and wonderful. We fought, and we, you know stop being friends at a certain point and became friends again. And it was just, uh, like I said, it was either, it was just craziness. Um, but it was real, you know, it, it, it's kind of about starting a business and it's not always easy. Did it feel natural the whole time, even though there was a camera in the room? I think in the beginning it was kind of weird. Um, but after day one or day two, you kind of just like, you do kind of forget it's there because it's like, like you're getting on my nerves, like you're pissing me off. Like it's like one of those things where it's like you kind of just start living and life just steps in and you've got to go somewhere and someone's late or, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like no matter what, it becomes real, real fast, you know, and, and you, do, you don't care about the camera after a while. So what, what do you like better? This is a question I love asking people who have tried both. You've got a long, extensive career in TV, and you've been in, in, on radio for the past few, few years. You're getting more into it every, every day, every show. What do you prefer, TV or radio? Oh, I don't know. My heart's still with TV. You know, I, I love that. Um, like I said, the only good thing about radio is that you don't have to go through hair and makeup. <laughs> you can just show up, you know, and you can do a show and entertain people. And, you know, so that I, I, I like. I like the easiness of it. But I love creating characters, and I love being playing make-believe, you know. And and then you go home, and it's like, wow, did I just do that? Did I really? like? It's like little victories throughout your day, you know, when you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't learn my lines, and then, they say action and you, you, the lines just come out, you know, and, or, or you do something amazing and you, you even surprise yourself and you're like, wow, did I do that? Did I feel that? You know, so I mean, my heart's still in TV. Um, so 
So, yeah, I mean, I think, number one, it's still TV, and uh, radio is definitely a close second. <laughs> <laughs> And you've you've obviously, just wrapping up the interview part, you've obviously got a lot on your plate at the moment, you know, with the radio, TV, you've got you've got the cons, but what, what do you think the next phase of your life will hold? What do you still want to try or do or achieve? Is there a, is there a crash reunion on the cards somewhere? You know what? I would love for there to be a reunion, and I know that there have been um, different opportunities where they, there could have been. I don't know if there ever will be. I mean, that's up to that's up to Saban. You know, he owns Power Rangers, so to get us all together, he would have to have to orchestrate that in some kind of way. But you know what? I feel like um, I feel like I get a little bit of that through the conventions. You know, I never would spend this kind of time with them. Um, you know, without the convention being. You know what I'm saying? Like the convention almost is like the facilitator, and we've developed such close friendships outside of the show, you know. So um, I hadn't seen Amy Jo in, like, forever. And then she popped up at, you know, Lexington Comic Con, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And, you know, it had been a long time. And it was so great to just sit in a room and just, like, look at her. And she's looking at me, and I'm like, how are you? What are you doing? Oh, my God. And she's like, oh, my God, I remember we used to do this. Or remember, like, we just went down memory lane, you know. And um, just had time to just kind of – catch up I, I i love it it was priceless and so great seeing her so i mean i i think in a way we've kind of been having our own little reunion i would love 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 for them to put the cast together one last for all who knows what what about a crush reunion from your old your old girl band days <laughs> oh my god i just saw them not too long ago i don't know i don't know i i feel like music i really put that one behind me who knows <laughs> that, would, that would be a miracle but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so is there any, anything else on your bucket list that, um, that stands absolutely. out? I mean, I, I'm a, I, I feel like now that I've got, I got bit by the producing bug, I love to write. I love writing scripts. So, yeah, I want to sell one of these shows I've written. I want to continue to shoot. Um, I want to continue. I've really started focusing in on uncensored talk, and I really want to take that little baby somewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, my bucket list is like a million miles long. <laughs> I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> We've got some fan qu- uh, fan questions that have come from my Facebook page. So, you ready to get into them? Yeah. So, Angie from Haggistown in Maryland says, what do you think your character would be up to if you decided to stay on the show that little bit longer? I think she would have continued um, to be sassy. I think I, I really wish I, I could have been on the show a little longer because I, I felt like Aisha was just catching steam. Like, she was just getting my personality. Like, they were really starting to write for me, and her personality was really coming out. Um, I just think she would have continued to smile and, and be tough. And um, if she were still on now, I think she'd probably be, like, a doctor or something. Like <laughs> she would have even surprised me. She was much smarter than I ever could be. <laughs> and Al- Allison from Jessup in Pennsylvania says, "Who would you like to work with on future projects?" Um, is it like Power Rangers or oh, just anything? Anything? Oh my gosh, I would love to work with Chandra Rhimes, who does like Scandal, Grey's Anatomy, uh, the new show that's coming out. I would love to work on a show that she's producing. I, I just love those two shows, Scandal and Grey's Anatomy, are like my favorite shows. Um. I would love to work with I would love to work with my old cast members, but present day, you know, like I would love to get the band back um, together, <laughs> Power Ranger band. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people. Like I mean, literally, I am like a TV buff. Like I would love to be on The Big Bang Theory. I would love to. Like, it's like <laughs> my list goes on. <laughs> A question from Adele from Brisbane in Queensland here in Australia. How big were the shoes to fill after Trini as the Yellow Ranger? Huge. Huge. She was amazing. Huge. It was like, okay, she's amazing, now you be amazing. Um, yeah, huge. So that's why I tried to just to make Aisha completely different because there was no way <laughs> it could be. She was so elegant and she was so beautiful and she was just so... I don't know, she just had this thing, you know, I got, when I saw footage of her, I got it, like, I was like, wow, of course she got the part, um, she just had a way about her that separated her from the character, you know, Trini and Kimberly were two different girls, 
And that was my goal, was just to make Aisha and Kimberly two different girls. Uh, Aisha and Trini. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that too. <laughs> um. That too. <laughs> but, like, when I was on the, on the show with Kimberly, I didn't want Kimberly, because Kimberly was very sassy too, but I didn't want Kimberly and Aisha to be the same. So I followed, Tr- I followed Twee's uh, direction in that sense, where she made Trini different. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I try to make my character different and, and different from both. Like I wanted Aisha to be completely different from Trini and from Kimberly's characters. I wanted her to kind of be her own girl. Uh, Shane from South Penrith in New South Wales, also here in Australia, asks, would you ever go back and do another season of Power Rangers if you asked? Yeah, it has to be Union, um, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Prima from Brescia in Italy asks, what do you see yourself doing in the future? More conventions, films, TV? Um, yeah, what, what do you see yourself doing? Or a bit of everything? All of the above. All of the above. The beautiful thing about conventions is they really opened up the door. Um, I'll go and do them on the weekends, but it's, it's allowed me to free up some things in my life so where I can really focus on my career again, you know? And so all of the above. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Chris from Rockhampton in Queensland, also in Australia, asks, there would be a, v- a very interesting moment with all the Yellow Rangers being females except for the lucky Mystic Force and Ninja Storm, who are the only male Yellow Rangers surrounded by an army of girl rangers. Since the Red Rangers had their special event episode with Forever Red, do you think it's mm-hmm. about time you get a, f- a Forever Yellow? Yes, it's overdue. Give us a give us a chance. It would be amazing. Can you imagine that? Like, there's some really cool Yellow Rangers. Like, I've had the pleasure. Again, the conventions have given me the opportunity to meet all these people. I would have never met any of them. Um, and we've gotten to meet each other, and we've gotten to, like, get to know each other. And we're, like, really good friends. And um, so, yeah, it's been amazing. I, I, would, I would love it. I would love it, love it, love it. Bye Bi- from San Diego asks, having hold the yellow, uh, the status of yellow ranger, how does the role impact you personally or make you feel? It makes me feel honored. Um, like I said, there have been a lot of beautiful, intelligent, and even handsome people wear the yellow costume, and um, I, I feel honored to have done that as well. Jen from Duisburg, I hope I'm saying that right, in Germany, says, if you could have any superpower that exists, what would yours be? Yeah. Um, what would I be able to do if I had a superpower? I would um, be able to, um, I would like to time travel. <laughs> what, what would you do with that? Where would you go? <laughs> I don't know. I'd go everywhere. <laughs> I'd go back in the past and change some things and go to the future and change some more things. I don't know. Maybe I would, that would, is that power? (laughs) (laughs) I guess so. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so, right? Although that might become a reality in the not too distant future, but who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Eric, Eric from Ontario in Canada says, if, (laughs) if you had to date one of the Power Ranger actors, any of them, not just Mighty Morphin, who would it be and why? And did you have any hots for any of the other actors? Now, I'm guessing this it is if you had a hall pass from your newly um, wedded to husband, <laughs> who, who would you go after? <laughs> None of them. Oh, my God. Like, I'm telling you, when we, it's like you work so many hours together, you're so unattracted to these people because <laughs> you, like, have to see them so much. They disgust um, you. <laughs> Right, like it's like you're like my brother, and you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> um, but no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't date any of them. I don't, I don't know. No, I haven't had. You know, the, the beautiful thing is they're all like family to me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and now that we've all gotten to meet each other at the cons, it's like we all have family. Like we all have somebody. Like we've got a girlfriend, a wife, a husband. So, so it's like inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, I haven't screened any of these questions, so there's a couple left. Um, no worry. Kira from Culloden in West Virginia, if you could be any other color, what would you be and why? I wouldn't want to be any other color. I, 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 I feel like yellow was my calling, you know? I remember my mom when I was a kid, she thought we dressed me in yellow, and she'd be like, I remember asking her why, and she was like, because it just looks good against your skin. And then lo and behold, I'm a yellow ranger. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, 
I wouldn't be any other colour. And Torsten from Mano Para West in South Australia asks, if you didn't receive the fortune of a role in Power Rangers at the time that you did, what career direction were you interested in at that stage of your life? I was going to be an actress. Like, that was what I was going to do. I was uh, enrolled in college to study theatre. I was going to go to film school. So I would have been an actress and I would have been a filmmaker. But that was the goal. Okay. So I, don't, I, cool. yeah. I still would have done it. Cool. So that's the end of the fan questions. Thank you for answering them. Karen, it, it's, it's been a pleasure. A trip down med, uh, memory lane. I love nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and hopefully you get out to Australia one day. Do you, do you yeah, want to... Yeah, um, get back there. Do you want I, to I plug love... your Facebook quickly? Yes. Yep. Uh, my Facebook is official Karen Ashley, and that's also my... Um, uh, my Twitter is at Karen Ashley, and then my uh, – there's so many of them. Like, my Instagram is official Karen Ashley as well. So, yeah, find me. Please. Cool. I love, it. I, love talk- I love talking to my fans, and I love um, staying in touch with them, and I, I love keeping them, uh, you know, it's like they're with me uh, at city to city, so I-, I love taking them on that journey. Cool. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, yeah, hope- hopefully yeah. you do get out here one day. I know. I want to get back to Australia so bad. It's like they tease me. They let me go there, and then I haven't been back since.